Hello everyone, uh, welcome back and I want to thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to be covering a little bit of word art or using text to create cut files. Um, I've had a couple requests for it so far and I would like to go ahead and dive into it real quick. I mean, let's keep in mind these are the basics on how to start working with script or start working with text. So first we need to select our, um, our text tool. So we're going to do welcome to word art okay so now we have a word to and a sentence to work with um, now as you can see from cutting sand for the with your CNC table I mean obviously this won't work unless you are going to be bonding this in some way shape or form to um, another piece of metal or uh, one, one way that you can do this would be just simply to create a little bar here the span across and be, to be able to connect these letters to there so we can keep our, the, the spacing that it comes standard with. But um, that, that is an easy way. Um, and we can actually make this, if you do decide to do it this way here, you can actually get in here and make this a little more fancy. Uh, if you come up here to the top right corner of this and you drag this down, see how it rounds your corners? So you can soften up these hard, sharp edges. So if you've got a real flowing font, um, you can control this and make this either round or square or somewhere in between uh, to achieve the look that you're looking for. But um, just one, one, one quick and easy way to do it. Um, but uh, we're actually going to dive in here. <clears throat> and I'm going to show you um, how to actually work with all these words and letters. So first we need to select all of our, our letters and font. We're going to come up here to path, object to path. Okay, so now this one here, this here, when you select on it, it's no longer a text. As you can see on the bottom of your screen here, it says group of 16 objects in layer one. So now this is actually an object. So now we can get in here and actually start uh, editing and moving things around. So how do we do that? Um, we're gonna select our node tool. Okay, so if we got kind of got a, uh, an overall design and how we want to do this, um, we can kind of come in here and move these around to however you want. So now we're going to put that there. That looks pretty good. Um, now we're going to come down here back to our node tool, and we need to work on this word here real quick. So you notice I'm switching back and forth between my node tool and my selector tool. So now I can hold the control key down, scroll this over to this that W is contacted because you can see the rest of our lettering is already connected. Now we can come back here and select this whole word. Well, they ain't gonna let me do it. Um, normally when I know I'm gonna do this, I actually type out each individual word and it speeds this process up a little bit, but I'm gonna show you how to, to work through this if you didn't do that. Um, again, we all learn and we all learnt um, some, some of this the hard way. So come back up to selector tool once I selected all the, the letters with my node tool. Okay, so now we're gonna come down here and say we wanna do something like this. Let me go ahead and scroll in here, move this kind of where it looks good, and you can tell what all the words and letters are. Okay, so now, so we're still selecting all these. Um, now let's come over here to our art, select all three of these, and then we'll bring this down and I can connect this. We kind of want to give it as our own individuality here. Okay. And for basic, um, uh, that actually looks pretty good. Um, so one thing you need to keep in mind working with CNC, I mean, when you're actually doing letters like this, it has to be able to hold itself together. So everything has to be connected. And keep in mind, you know, depending on what you're designing, it's, it needs to be pretty strong um, or strong enough to be able to withstand, you know, ride around the car, ride around the boxes, shipping boxes. Um, and obviously, you know, people being able to, ha to, to be able to hang this on their wall. Um, Let's come up here and fix this welcome real quick. So we're going to come down here. Whoops, I thought I had my, my node tool selected. There we go. Now we're going to scroll this over and fix this. Okay, so now overall that looks pretty good. And again, I mean, we're not getting real technical here as at this point. This is just basic introductory on how to start designing some, some artwork. 
Um, something else I just noticed is our A isn't attached to our R. Now we can do this one of two ways. Um, we can either do like we did with the W and just slide it over till it touches our O, or we can actually get in here and actually connect these two. Let me show you how to do that. Um, in my first video, I covered this Bezier tool. And this tool right here is going to come in handy um, as you start designing tools. So let's go ahead, select here, to here, to here, to here. And don't worry about making this perfect, guys, because all we're doing is creating a patch here to connect these two together with. Um, so now we're going to grab our selector tool and we're going to select our A and our R and we're going to come here to Union. Now see how that connected these two together? It doesn't look real good, does it? It's got some sharp lines here and it just doesn't flow. So now we're actually going to go in here and edit this a little bit to make this actually look a little better to where it flows. Now, um, if you notice that the, the, some of these nodes have tails on them, you can actually get all these nodes up here, depending on what you want to do, whether you're just doing a square corner, if you're doing a rounded, um, if you want to control both sides of the node, say you want to flow this up and then, or down, or wh whatever, you, whatever look you want to achieve, and you can actually adjust these in here to where they look a little better. Now, sometimes, and as always with CNC, the less nodes you have, the better. So there's a lot of cases that you actually come in here and deleting these nodes will actually make things flow a little better. And there'll be a lot of times that you'll have two nodes for one on one spot. And sometimes these double nodes will actually create you problems when you are actually designing and importing into SheetCam because it'll say that there's du duplicate layers and it'll it'll cause you a lot of a little bit of grief. Okay, so this is starting to look a little better. So now we're going to come out here, make this flow a little better. Now this line here flows pretty well into this here, and then this here actually flows pretty well into this here, and that's connected. Now, if you didn't know we just did that, you know, you wouldn't really be able to tell. I mean, because um, you can see, you can kind of go by your other lettering on here on how it's laid out in design. Uh, this kind of flows in the same way, so it kind of gives you that handwritten, handwritten um, type type look and feel. So um, from here, I mean, pretty much we're done with our artwork. Um, now we need to connect all these together. So while our sl node selector tool is selected, we're going to hold down on our shift key, and we're going to select all these letters. Once we get to here, come up to Path and Union. Now you notice when I select on this, all these letters are selected. That's what you want to look for. Now all these, these letters are connected together. So now with this selected, we're going to hold down our Shift key, come down to the T and O, come back up here to Path, Union. Now they're all selected. So now when I select on the T or select on the O, everything is selected. That's what you want to be looking for. You can do, I'll try to do all these together, but sometimes that's a lot of nodes and a lot of, and don't get panic if this right here happens to you. This is just a glitch within Inkscape. Um, you scroll in and out and it's, it's right back, so don't think you're deleting anything, but it does periodically happen. But um, when, you start, when you start doing a lot of these together, as you can see, there's a whole lot of nodes here within this lettering for your, all your arcs, arcs and radiuses. That's, that's a lot of data to, to, for your um, PC, and that's a lot of data for Inkscape to, to manage. So um, do, doing shorter words and doing um, less at a time, it actually speeds things up for you on your design, unless you've got a really, really big PC. Um, I don't know too many people that's starting to do this that's got a really big PC uh, for, for the DIYers. But um, now we're just going to keep chugging away here and keep connecting these together. Path, Union. Okay, now we're got almost all the way done and hold the shift key down we're going to select our R. now you notice these two here went ahead and selected because we went ahead and joined these together when we made this patch in here to connect the A and the R path union and you're done um, this is actually ready to be uploaded onto and to um, sheet cam and cut out on your table um, now keep in mind when you're cutting out on your table um, that 
real small fonts depending on what type of cutter that you have it doesn't work real well um, you're going to want to make sure this is big enough especially when you start getting into the the cursive or the italic um, type fonts um, you're going to run into issues because uh, some of these areas and these little voids and, and little areas aren't actually big enough for your plasma cutter to get into and actually cut out um, so it's going to want to skip those but again uh, we're going to set the size of this um, right now we're 1.43 inches high so we're going to lock this so we can keep our aspect ratios that way this doesn't change and we're going to make this say 12 inches tall or 12 inches wide okay so you see when we scaled up it gave our dimensions and it kept our proportions everything looks exactly the way it was we're going to bring this back we're going to bring this down here to the left hand corner like I always do you're going to have a lot of people saying that you don't have to do this and really you don't um, if you're up here in the middle of your, middle of your workspace um, and designing it, it doesn't really matter when it, when it enters in it's going to always enter in this corner because this is where you have your table and sheet cam configured from but the main reason why I move things around like I do um, I've touched, touched on several different case, uh, and cases here at this point um, I always like to scan this area up here and select because um, when you start editing sometimes um, a node will be up here and it's not visible um, and as you're cutting this out your CNC table will actually see this node and it will travel up here make one small piercing and come back and then finish finish your cut and I'm trying to keep you from from experiencing that so that's why I'm kinda of showing you to to move things around and scan where you just work to make sure that there's nothing there um, from here all we do is we will save this on our computer or a jump drive uh, upload it into um, sheet cam and start cutting away so I hope you enjoyed this. Um, thank you for watching. And if you find this, found this information to be helpful and would like to learn more, uh, please like and subscribe our video and our, so subscribe to our channel. And I will be creating more basic tutorials like this to help you get started with this thing called Inkscape and Sheet Cam for CNCNC. Have a good day.